Unit 10, Day 4, Similar Solids. If two polygons are similar with the lengths of corresponding sides in the ratio of A to B, then the ratio of their areas is A squared to B squared. So we talked about this back in Unit 5 with similar triangles and similar polygons, but if you take the side length of quadrilateral 1 and compare it to the side length of quadrilateral 2, then they simplify into a ratio of A to B, and that's what we call the scale factor. You take the two corresponding sides, whatever they are, and you simplify those lengths and you get a scale factor of A to B. Then the ratio of their areas, if we were to calculate the area of quadrilateral 1 and the area of quadrilateral 2, and then you simplify those and compare those, they actually end up in a ratio of A squared to B squared. So here, what we want to do is we want to find the ratio of their perimeters and of their areas. So here, these two pentagons, they have a side length of 4 compared to 6. And so their perimeters are going to simplify to 2 to 3. And then their area, the ratio of the areas of these two pentagons will be a squared to b squared. So it will be 4 to 9. I want you to go ahead and pause, try the other two sets, and then check back with me to see if you got the right idea. Hopefully you found that the ratio of these two squares of the perimeter would be 1 to 4, and the area ratio would be 1 to 16. The two parallelograms, the perimeter ratio should be 3 to 2, and then the area should be 9 to 4. Now we want to see what happens when we take this idea of the changing ratio into three dimensions. If two similar solids have a scale factor of A to B, then their corresponding surface areas have a ratio of A squared to B squared, and the corresponding volumes are going to have a ratio of A cubed to B cubed. Here we just want to decide whether the two solids are similar. So we want to compare the side lengths. Here, when you compare 6 to 3, it has a ratio of 1 to 2. So we want to see if all the other side lengths correspond with that. 4 to 2 has a ratio of 2 to 1. 3 to 4 does not follow that ratio of 1 to 2. And so these two solids are not similar. When we consider these two cylinders, the radius of 4 to a radius of 6 simplifies to a scale factor of 2 to 3, and then we want to consider the heights, 6 to 9, and that also simplifies 2 to 3. So we know that our scale factor is 2 to 3. So let's just talk about what's going to happen with their surface areas and their volumes. Their surface area is going to have a ratio of 2 squared to 3 squared, which is going to be 4 to 9. And then their volume will have a ratio of 2 cubed to 3 cubed, which is going to be 8 to 27. Now this is a problem that's very similar to ones you'll have on your test and the SOL. Here it says two rectangular prisms, F and G, are similar with the scale factor of 1 to 3. So first you need to know that that 1 to 3 follows the same order. So F to G is 1 to 3. We need to find the surface area and volume of prism G. Given that the surface area of prism F is 24 feet squared, and the volume of prism F is 7 cubic feet. So the first thing I want you to do is to make a chart. So our chart is going to look a little something like this. And what I want you to do is we're going to title this prism F, prism G, and then along the left side here, we're going to talk about the scale factor, the surface area, and volume. Okay. So first, let's plug in the information that we know. The scale factor is 1 to 3 from F to G. And then, next what we have is the surface area of prism F is 24 square feet. So surface area 24 feet squared. And then the volume 
a prism F is going to be 7 cubic feet. So we have 7 feet cubed. Okay. So ideally, what we want to do is we want to find the surface area of prism G, and we want to find the volume of prism G. So I'm just going to put different variables there. Now, we are going to set up proportions to solve for this, but before we do that, we need to know the ratios. So the surface area, the ratio of surface area of the two similar figures, or the, the two similar solids, is going to be A squared to B squared. So right now we have 1, this is our A, 3, this is our B. So we want to square them 1 to 9. And then we're going to just go ahead and do the same idea for volume. We want the ratio of A cubed to B cubed, where A and B are the scale factor. So 1 cubed is 1, and then 3 cubed is 27. And now we want to solve for one at a time, surface area separately from volume, but we're going to use that ratio of the surface areas. We know that it's 1 to 9, and we're going to set that equal to the surface area that we know that corresponds with the 1 over the one that we're looking for, the one that corresponds with the 9. And then here, all you're going to do is cross multiply. So you should get x is equal to 9 times 24, which is 216. So our answer will be 216 feet squared for the surface area of prism G. And we're going to take that same idea for the volume. We're going to take the ratios 1 to 27, and we're going to set that equal to the volume that we know, which corresponds with 1, and the volume that we're looking for, which corresponds to 27. And then, likewise, we want to cross multiply, and you get y is equal to 7 times 27, which is 189. So our answer is 189 feet cubed for the volume of prism G. The math that we're doing isn't terribly difficult. You just need to remember how to adjust the ratios for surface area and volume given the scale factor so that you can set up your proportions correctly. Now here, this problem is kind of backwards of what we did before. It asks us to find the scale factor of the two cubes. The diagrams are really irrelevant. They don't really matter to us. All we need to know are the actual volumes. So the first step we need to take is we need to compare the two volumes, 512 to 1728. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to simplify this until it's a fraction in its simplest form. Now you can keep dividing, but a couple calculator functions that you can use, and I'll put those calculator functions here in black, is take 512 and divide it by 1728. That should give you a decimal that says 0.2962, so on and so forth. So to turn this into a simplest form fraction, I want you to hit the math button on your calculator, and then it's option number one. It has this arrow and it says frac. I want you to hit that. And then your screen should say something like A and S with that arrow and frac. Hit enter. And then you should get a fraction in simplest form of 8 over 27. So this is what we want to use. And these are the calculator steps to get there. So here's a little trick to simplify fractions a lot faster on your calculator. Now, the next step we want to do is we want to take that 8 over 27 and compare it to the ratio A cubed over B cubed. Because we said that the ratio of volumes is going to be A cubed to B cubed. Our final answer, what we're looking for, is actually the scale factor of A to B. So here's something I want you to think about. And this is kind of as a side thought. When we take, when you have x squared equal to 4, when you want to isolate the variable x, you take the square root of both sides. Now we have something like x cubed equal to a number, 
and in order to get x by itself, we need to take the cube root of both sides. So it's the square root symbol, but it has this little 3 sitting right there. So that's what we need to do. So we're going to find other calculator functions, because we need to find a and b and get rid of this cubed. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to hit the math button. And then down at option 4, it has this cube root symbol. So I want you to go down to 4 and hit enter. And then on your calculator screen, you'll have this. And then I want you to type in the number 8, close your parentheses, and hit enter. You should get, you should get 2 for an answer. And that's what A is equal to. Now I want you to do this process again, except of course this time you're going to type in 27, and when you hit enter, you should get 3. So your final answer, the scale factor of the two cubes, is actually 2 to 3. Okay, this is all for today. You'll have plenty of practice on the worksheet that you're going to work on for the rest of class today. Um, work on everything you can together, and then save any questions you have for me next class.